it's about winning. So if the boy's not ready, then the boy don't fight. If the boy don't train, the boy don't fight. You know, this is sport of one winner, one loser. It's as simple as that. My name's David Johnson. I'm a plasterer by day and a boxing trainer by night. Well, Dad boxed, uh, Granddad boxed, so it was in, it was in in the blood. <coughs> it's like a drug, boxing. When it gets into your blood, you can't get it out. <coughs> Even when you finish boxing, you know it, it was always my passion to go on to be a trainer. <coughs> I'll tell you what it is, because most of the boys that you deal with in this sport don't have a lot. They come from difficult backgrounds, um, and you can give them a direction in life, give them something to aim for, and change their lives around, you know. Brian, for one, at the back of me here, who's shadow boxing, we've changed him. Now he's a success story, and he's gonna go on to be a bigger success story. That's the drive, what, what makes me come to this club five days a week and put in the time that I do. Because I don't get paid for this, this is all voluntary. Um, and hopefully, one day, um, God willing, we'll have a boy that, where some of that can be paid back. Money's not really the important thing. And um, when I say paid back, not for me, I mean for the club, not for me. I'm doing this for the boys and the girls. The trainers I had as, as a junior boxer were rubbish. They didn't spend any time with me. Most of them had their own boys in the club. So I always said that when I was a trainer, I would give all my time and, and time to every boy, no matter how good he was or how bad he was, um, they would all have equal time. And that's, what, that's why I've been so successful. So move down, move. Is your jab down here, I started off 25 years in the amateur boxing and took, I think it was 12 national titles plus nine runners up. I had boys that box for England, I've got a boy that boxes for GB now. Well, I was running the club in Reading called The Real Deal Gym and that went into receivership, the building went into receivership, so we had to get out. I made a phone call to Charlie, um, said to him, would he be interested in taking our boxes and me as a trainer on, which he did. I'm Charlie and I own the gym. <coughs> the gym was run down. I had a story behind the gym and, you know, it seemed a good thing. I've always had a passion for boxing and I just took the opportunity. It didn't set out to open the gym, it was just, it just happened. You know, I love going to the fights, being involved, being a part of the team. Basically, it's teamwork. It's not just, it's not one person, it's all, you know, it's a team. Charlie's putting it, put his heart and soul into it and, and um, we're doing the same. No disrespect to this club, but they were cannon fodder. They really was. You know, I've been watching them on the show, the boys were getting beat all the time. So I think the first conversation was, you know, things are going to change. For one, you're not fit enough. Two, you're going to get fitter. Three, you're going to win. I don't like losing. I never have liked losing. I'm not a loser. People say they're competing. It's not about competing. It's about winning. Faraz Akra! I think we're on about 22 bouts now with two losses. One of them which I had to stop myself for a cut. Not a bad record, I don't think. We've gone into the semi-pro league now with the Queensbury. I do like it. They put the boys on a platform, you know? Let's face it, if it wasn't for the boxers, there'd be no boxing. You can have as many trainers and officials as you want, but, you know, it's about the boxers. And you've got to be able to sell tickets. If you're going to go professional, you've got to be able to sell tickets. That's what it's about. We have a winner making your new Queensbury Boxing League National Middleweight Champion, Farhaz Akra! We're really enjoying it. All the boys seem to be enjoying it. But it won't be long before we're ready to move on again, you know. This is what boxing's about. And then we come into the big league, which is the professional ranks. I mean, that's what you start boxing for. Every amateur boxer really wants to go on to be a professional boxer and make a name for himself. Not an easy thing to do, but if you're dedicated and you put the time in, yeah, you can do it.
We want to turn this gym into one of the best gyms in the south of England. That's our plan. Uh, as you can see, we've got a lovely gym, it's big. We do need more equipment in the gym. We've got to get the gym ready for the boxers when they go professional. For camaraderie and, and meeting some really good friends, you know, even if you box them, you, you still become really good friends with them. Um, I don't think there's a sport like it, to be honest with you. There's a lot of hard times in this sport as well. There's a lot of blood and tears and, and uh, sweat, and it's lost in these gyms. I can honestly say that I'm very, very proud as a trainer to be part of this team. Um, they work extremely hard. They could work harder sometimes, but, you know, they're 20-year-old lads. Camberley Boxing Club is a, a family. It is a family, and we're all one family. Yeah, brothers and sisters, <laughs> with the father figure. Um, I think that's how it's got to be if you want to succeed. <laughs>